In the book of Genesis chapter 13, I want to read uh, just a few verses of scripture here, uh, beginning at verse number 14, and then I'll conclude at verse 15 in Genesis 13. If you have it, say, I have it. Verse number 14, and the Lord said unto Abram, after that lot was separated from him, I want you to hear that, and the Lord said unto Abram, after that lot was separated from him, lift up now thine eyes and look from the place where thou art northward and southward and eastward and westward. For all the land which thou seest, to thee will I give it and to thy seed forever. Now let's look to uh, the book of Isaiah 43. There are just a couple verses of scripture that we want to add uh, to this reading tonight. And then we'll share uh, the message and the word uh, for the year 2020. Again, Isaiah 43, look there at verse number 18. I want to read verse 18 and verse 19. The word of the Lord says, Remember ye not the former things, neither consider the things of old. Behold, I will do a new thing, now it shall spring forth, shall you not know it? I will even make a way in the wilderness and rivers in the desert. What a powerful passage of scripture. Let me read that again as well. Remember ye not the former things, neither consider the things of old. Tell your neighbor, forget about it. Behold, I will do a new thing now it shall spring forth, now it shall spring forth. Shall you not know it? I will even make a way in the wilderness and rivers in the desert. I will make a way in the wilderness and rivers in the desert. My brothers and sisters, I want to take the next few moments to talk to you from the simple subject. And this is the theme that we're using uh, for the year 2020 uh, for this church and uh, perhaps those of you who are visiting with us tonight uh, I'm, I'm, I'm thinking that maybe you could apply this to your life as well because I believe that the Spirit of God is certainly speaking to all of us but there is a word that I believe that God is speaking to the body of Christ and a word that he is speaking to those of us that uh, are seeking him and those of us that desire to walk with him and to see him to do greater things in our lives. I want to talk to you tonight from the subject, a new thing. This year, 2020, God is going to do a new thing in your life. The year 2020 is the year of a new thing. And I really want you to get that in your heart and I want you to get it in your spirit because everything in your life is going to change. And I say this prophetically, everything in your life is going to change. And for many of us, things are already changing. You, you can discern it, you can sense it, you can look into your life you can look around your life and you can already sense that God is changing things in your life he's rearranging situations and he's doing it on purpose and oftentimes when God gets ready to do something significant in our lives he will shift circumstances and situations around us because he has a predetermined end that he wants to get us to. He has a purpose, he has a goal in mind, if you will. He has a destiny in mind for your life. For those of you that have uh, watched this ministry for the last three or four years or so, I have used the word shift to describe the new years that we have come into over the last three years. 
I've used the word shift because the Holy Spirit was speaking to me about this back in the year 2017 and I, I was seeking the Lord and I said, Lord, what do you want me to say to your people about the upcoming year? And the Lord said to me and I could hear it as clear as day. He said, I want you to tell my people that, that I'm taking them through a shift that there is a shift that is taking place. And as I began to seek the Lord more fervently about it and to ask more questions about it, I said, Lord, what do you mean about a shift? He said, I want you to tell my people that I am shifting everything in their lives. That process for me started in the year 2017 and I started declaring that word to this church in 2018 I was still speaking the same thing and even in the two in the year 2019 which we're about to come to an end of God was still speaking shift and even as I prepared to come here tonight the Holy Spirit was still speaking to me about a shift he said I want you to tell the church that I am still shifting them that I'm still taking them from one place to another place. That I am disturbing certain things within their lives. I am shifting certain things around them because there is something that he has in mind that he plans to do in your life and he is determined to not allow the devil to stop it. There are some things that God is determined to do in your life that you can't even stop. God knows how to turn your heart. He knows how to turn your mind. He knows how to take your will and, and twist it to where he needs it to go so that his glory can be fulfilled in your life. God is shifting everything. He's shifting everything in your life. He's shifting everything even all around this world. Everything in this planet is shifting. Everything that we know uh, to be normal, everything that we know to be familiar, it is going through a shift. God is determined to change everything that we know because he is ushering us into something that we have never seen. He is bringing the body of Christ. He is bringing the world into understandings that we've never had. He is bringing us into his mind, into his wisdom, into the power of the Holy Ghost that we have never known before. And he is determined to perform some things in your life that the devil said would never be performed. And yet your life is constantly shifting it is constantly turning because if you would just study the word shift it means to transition it means to transition from one place to another place or the way I like to say it it means to transition from one dimension to another dimension you see, because if you would pay close attention to what is happening in your life, God is moving you from one dimension to another dimension. And I'm going to explain that to you here in just a moment. We are ending the year 2019 tonight. And we are coming into a new decade. We are stepping into the year 2020. This is a very significant time in the realm of the spirit. I said to you about two or three weeks ago that the Bible declares that the sons of Issachar understood the times that we were in and they knew what Israel ought to do. They were in tune to the voice of God and so they could clearly express to the people of God what God was up to. And that's what I came here tonight to do, to try to explain to you as best as I can through the power of the Holy Ghost what God is up to in the year 2020 because I have discerned the time. I have determined, I have discerned the season. There is a shift that is about to happen in your life and God is about to bring your life to a close in some ways. 
That there are certain experiences that you've had in your past that God is about to end. He is about to shut down. He is about to shut certain doors in your life and he is going to open up new ones because his glory is about to take over your life. When you study the number 20, the number 20, the number 20, it is, it is talking about a particular waiting period that you have been in and that waiting period is now getting ready to end. That it, it actually talks about you have been in a waiting process and, and you're waiting for freedom. You're waiting for redemption. You're waiting for restoration. You're waiting for a breakthrough. You're waiting for something to happen. You're waiting for some good news. You're, you're waiting for a turn. You're, you're waiting for the blessing to show up. You're waiting for an angel to be released. You're waiting for your body to be healed. You're waiting for some more money to come into your pocket. You're waiting for circumstances is to shift and many of us we've been waiting for a long time some of you you've been waiting to have joy that you've never had you've been waiting to have happiness in your life you've been waiting to experience peace that you've never had in your life I'm talking about the kind of peace that passeth all understanding the kind of joy that is unspeakable and full of glory it is a kind of joy and peace that can only come through the power of the Holy Spirit and many people not just in this church but throughout the body of Christ and might I say around the world have been waiting to experience certain things in their lives that they thought they would never experience we have been in a struggle we have been in a fight we have been in a battle we have had to deal with strange things and even though you can see the blessing of God in the year 2019 you can also see how much heartache and how much pain and how many things you had to grapple with just to make it here tonight because God is shifting your life he's taking the good and the bad and he's using it for his glory but don't you forget this number 20 is talking about a waiting season that you have been in and that waiting season is coming to a close. What I came here tonight to tell you is that your struggle is over. Oh, you don't hear me tonight. Your struggle is over. The hard time is over. The curse that tried to curse you has been, hallelujah, offset by the power of God. That hindrance that has come into your life, it is coming to a close. Tell somebody, my struggle is over. Yeah, my struggle is over. That Somebody in here ought to give God praise for that. If you believe that God is about to end the struggle in your life. I don't know about you, but anytime God tells me that he's about to end a struggle in my life, it makes me happy. It makes my toes jerk. It makes the power of the Holy Ghost on the inside jump up and down on the inside of me because I know that something good is about to happen in my life. And many people have been in a hard time and you've had hard tests and God is saying, but now that season is coming to an end in your life and God is about to open up the floodgates and release a blessing that you've never seen. What I'm trying to tell you is that whatever it is you've been struggling with, that season is coming to a close. That season is no longer going to follow you into the year 2020, but all you have to do is renew your mind. You, you have to renew your mind. You, you have to change your mind. Paul said, be not conformed to this world, but be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind that you may prove what is that good and acceptable and perfect will of God. You've got to move your mind from a place of struggle to a place of blessing. Are you listening to me tonight? You've got to move your mind from a place of pain to a place of breaking through. 
You've got to move your mind to just barely making it, to just barely having enough and moving it into a place of increase and overflow because that's what God is getting ready to do in your life. Are you hearing what I'm saying? You've got to deliver your mind from smallness and let it go into a place of largeness because that's where God is taking you in the year 2020, the year 2021. You've got to change how you've been thinking because something great is about to invade your life and you've got to be open and prepared for it mentally and spiritually and even physically because everything in your life is going Going into an upgrade. Are y'all sleepy in here? God is ending some things because he is getting ready to begin some things. And he's having to end some things so that you can walk into a place of new beginnings where he begins to deliver you into a new season of blessing and breakthrough and having what you need. He is breaking you away from struggle and hardship and he's bringing you into a blessing that's not just going to last for a day. It's not just going to last for a week, but that blessing is going to continue to permeate itself and it's going to continue to manifest itself in your life and you've got to open yourself up and say Lord bless me somebody throw up your hands and say Lord bless me however you want to bless me how, however you want to do it God however you want to send that thing Lord just bless me I'm looking for a blessing I'm expecting a blessing I've had pain I've had heartache I've had a struggle I've robbed Peter to pay Paul I need a blessing in my life Lord bless me indeed bless me however you want to do it 2020 is a year for you to be blessed Touch your neighbor and tell them I need to be blessed in this year. Yeah, I need a blessing in this year. I need, I need increase in this year. I need, I need abundance this year because you have lived in a season of lack. You have lived in a season of lack. And let me give you some Bible to help you to understand that I'm not just talking out of my head. I'm not just talking out of my flesh. If you would consider the book of Job, the Bible teaches us that Job went through a hard time. The Bible says that the enemy was released against Job. He attacked his family. He attacked his body. He attacked his finances. He attacked his cattle. He attacked everything that Job had in his life. The only thing that the devil didn't do was kill Job. And God gave him permission to do it. His friends even turned on him. Everything went bad for Job. But then if you keep reading to Job 42, and if you're able to get down to verse 10, the Bible says, and then God turned the captivity of Job. He turned the captivity of Job. Touch your neighbor and say, God's getting ready to turn your situation around. Uh, Y'all don't hear me in here. God's getting ready to turn that thing around. He's getting ready to turn that situation around in your life. The devil said this thing is going to go into 2020 and the year 2021 and it's going to stay in your life until you die. But the devil is a lie. I came here tonight to tell you that the Holy Ghost is about to turn everything in your life and bring you into a place of absolute blessing he's getting ready to lift you he's getting ready to shift everything in your life for his glory and you're gonna give him a dance and you're gonna give him a praise and you're gonna give him glory because you're coming into something you never seen you've never seen this God turned Job's captivity in other words he shut that season down he ended the struggle and Job for the rest of his life never went back into that struggle again. Even Joseph, when God delivered him from the pit, 
and delivered him from the prison and brought him into the palace, Job never went into that struggle again. I'm telling you, the power of the Holy Ghost is about to take over your life. He's going to shut down the voice of your flesh. He's going to shut down the curses that come against you. He's going to rebuke the devil that's trying to take your, your praise, trying to take your joy, trying to take your mind, trying to take your peace, trying to take your happiness and God's going to kick him out of your life and you're going to move in the power of the Holy Ghost. Somebody give God praise if you know that's for you. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Tell somebody tonight it comes to a close. Oh, tell them, tell them, tell them, tell them with some faith in your eyes. It's coming to a close. It's coming to a close. It's coming to a close. It's coming to a close tonight in this place, the year 2019, December 31st, around midnight. It comes to a close. The devil should have killed you when he had the chance. But it's too late now. Hallelujah. God's getting ready to blow your mind. God's getting ready to do exceedingly, abundantly, above all that you may ask or think according to the power that worketh in you. Who am I preaching to in here? God's about to do some strange things in your life, some crazy things in your life. Your eyes have not seen, your ears have not heard, neither have entered into your heart. You had to go through what you went through in 2019 because of what God is about to do next. Your next is going to be greater than your former. What's coming now is going to overtake what you've been through. Well, pastor, how do I step into this? How, how do I begin to walk with God into this new season? I'm glad you asked. <laughs> the first thing I want you to understand, if you're going to walk into this level of blessing, is the Lord said, you have to forget the past. You have to forget the past. When I say forget, I mean forget. In Isaiah 43, 18, God said, remember ye not the former things. He, then he goes on to say, neither, neither consider the things of old. Now listen to that. He says, he says don't, even, don't even consider your past. Don't even consider what used to be. Don't even think about what happened. Don't even bring it up anymore. He says, don't even consider the past. Remember ye not the former things. And I need you to understand that God is telling you to not remember the former things because they don't matter. It, it doesn't matter. It, it doesn't matter if you were right or wrong, it's over. God is saying, forget about it. Stop beating yourself up. Stop condemning yourself. Stop sending yourself to hell. God is saying you've already repented of it. You've already asked for forgiveness from it. He says now let it go and forgive yourself and move on to the next thing. Tell your neighbor forget about it. Forget about who hurt you. Forget about who betrayed you. Forget about who disappointed you. Forget about who wasn't there for you because what God is about to do is he's going to make up the things that you didn't get. But the only way you can step into something new is to let go of something old. You can't go into a 2020 mindset with a 2019 mentality. That's why God said in the book of Isaiah, remember ye not the former things, neither consider ye the things of old, because God's about to do a new thing. God's about to do a new thing. Tell your neighbor it doesn't matter anymore. 
it doesn't matter anymore. The, the question you need to ask yourself is, did I learn from it? Oh, am I in the right church tonight? Did I learn from it? Did, did I gain some wisdom from it? Did I get some knowledge out of it? Did I broaden my scope of understanding from it? Did I get stronger from it? That's all you need to consider. Hallelujah. Sometimes God allows you to go through things and make mistakes so that you can mature from it and develop from it. You ought to tell your neighbor, I'm stronger now. I'm stronger now. The enemy used to come in and whip you easy, but you're stronger now. You, you've had some heartache. You've had some pain. You've had some things to go wrong, but you've learned from it now. The devil can't just blow at you and you fall away now. He's got to really come against you because you've developed some spiritual muscles from the things that you've been through in your past. You can see the devil now. You can see the joker coming now. I can see what you you're trying to do now I've learned from the past now I'm ready for my future tell your neighbor I'm ready for my future uh, tell somebody else around you I'm ready for my future I'm ready for my future. The past is in the past. The past is in the grave. The past is under the blood. The past has been forgiven. This is a new day. This is the day that the Lord has made. I shall rejoice and be glad in it. I shall give him a praise. I shall walk into the blessing. It's over. It's behind me. My eyes are fixated on what's coming now. Tell somebody my blessing is ahead of me. Yeah, my blessing is ahead of me. My blessing is ahead of me. Don't you turn into Lot's wife and start looking behind you when God has a blessing ahead of you. Don't you be concerned about what's behind you because it ain't there anymore. God is saying what's ahead of you, your eyes have never seen. Take your eyes off the path. Oh God, can I preach in here? He says, remember ye not the former things, neither consider the things of old. Now look there at verse 19 in Isaiah 43. Then he says, behold, I will do a new thing. That word, now listen to me now, that word behold, is, it's, it's God saying, now listen to me. Take a listen. I, I want you to really pay close attention to what I'm saying. That's what that word behold means. Listen up. I'm trying to say something to you. He, he wants you to understand that, that the things of old and the things of the past don't matter because I'm getting ready to do something totally new. Completely new. Brand new. You've never seen these pair of shoes before in your life. You've never worn these clothes before. What I'm trying to help you to understand is this new thing. It's really new. And if it's something new, you're not going to be able to look into your past and say, it, oh, it looks like that. You're not going to be able to look into your past and say, oh, it resembles that experience. No, it's new. It's, it's, it's totally new. This is something you have to open yourself up to because it's not going to be what it used to be. It's not going to go the way you thought it would go because it's new. What you're going to have to do in the year 2020 is adjust yourself to the new thing because you've never had this. You've never been blessed on this level. You're going to have to have some people come around you to give you some advice on how to handle what's about to happen. Because you've never had this kind of breakthrough. You've never had this kind of deliverance to hit your life. God is saying, behold, I will do a new thing. You're getting ready to have thoughts and ideas and concepts into your spirit that you've never had. I'm telling you, businesses are coming up in your heart and in your spirit, something you never thought you would do. God's getting ready to release it in your life. 
ministry ideas, songs, songs, music, all kind of things are getting ready to just be downloaded into your spirit and it's something you never even imagined. Something you never thought you would have. Places you never thought you would go. Things you never thought you would do. It's getting ready to come. And God is saying, I will do a new thing. I will do a new thing. When are you going to do the new thing? He says, now it shall spring forth. Now it shall spring forth. And this is what I was talking about in terms of you having faith. You have to step into the arena of faith right now. See, you can't wait for the blessing to come to shout. You, you can't wait for something to show up at your front doorstep before you give God praise. When you're walking in faith, you praise God on credit. You praise him in advance. You say, I know it's coming. You say, I know this thing is about to happen. You start walking like it. You start talking like it. You start dressing like it. You start acting like it because it's already done in the realm of the spirit. I don't have to see it before I see it. Tell somebody your new thing starts now. It starts now. Whatever your clock is saying right now, it starts now. Now somebody just stepped into the power of the Holy Ghost. I just felt it. You're getting ready to get a release right now. By the time you get back home, something is going to change. By the time you wake up tomorrow morning, everything around you is going to be turned upside down for the glory of God because God is saying, I'm sending this thing now. Now, my life changes. Now, I'm going for broke. Now, it changes forever. Now, I'm going to be the man that God has called me to be. Now, everything that I've dreamed about, everything I've imagined, everything that I've prayed about and walked the floors late at night about, everything I've worried about, everything that has concerned me, everything that isolated me, alienated me, hurt me, everything that rose up against me, God is saying, right now, I'm changing it. And I'm sending a new thing. I'm sending a new thing. He says, I'm going to even make a way in the wilderness. I'm going to send uh, rivers in the desert. I'm going to send strange blessings into your life. I'm going to send blessings into your life that you've never had. I'm going to make a way in the wilderness. A wilderness is a barren place. God is saying even in a place of barrenness, you're going to find blessing. I'm sending rivers in the desert. You don't find rivers in a desert. A, 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 a desert is a dry place. But God is saying, I'm sending the supernatural. I'm sending rivers in a dry place. I'm sending blessing in a dry place because you've been in a dry place and now he's getting ready to wet your life with the blessing that you've never had. This is what this new thing is and this is why the enemy has attacked you and this is why it's been so hard for you and this is why it's been so difficult for you because you're coming into a wet place where the blessing of God is going to take over you've got to understand that God is sending a new thing he's sending a new thing tell your neighbor it's a new thing he's sending a new thing he's sending you a new thing he's sending you a new thing what else must I do, pastor? You've got to let go of lot. You have to let go of your lots, L-O-T. I'm in Genesis 13 now. God told Abraham, I'm going to bless you. I'm going to multiply you. I'm going to cause your seed to be multiplied like the grains of sand that you see. As you look into the heaven and see the stars, so shall your seed be. He promised Abraham that he was going to use him mightily, that the Jewish nation would come out of him, 
that he would be blessed supernaturally that he would come into increase and to overflow, but he had to leave his home country and get out of way and get away from his family and from his kindred. He had to leave his familiar surroundings to walk into this blessing and God told him to completely distance himself away from everything familiar, but when you move over into Genesis 13, you realize that Abraham brought his nephew Lot with him. And God told him not to take anyone with him. That he was to just walk by faith and trust that God would provide everything he needed and that the Holy Ghost would lead him into the blessing. But he took Lot. And Lot had a group of herdsmen and so did Abraham. And after they had spent some time amongst themselves, Lot's herdsmen began to have some conflict with Abraham's herdsmen. And there was an issue between the two sides. And it was causing so much problem that Abraham decided to have a conversation with Lot. He said, look, he said, listen, you know, you're related to me. I don't want to have this issue between us. He said, what I want you to do is take you and your herdsmen and, and find some part of the land and you take your herdsmen there, your people there, and I'll go in the opposite direction. Lot decides to choose Sodom and Gomorrah. He decides to go in the opposite direction than Abraham. But if you follow the text closely, the text that we read tonight the Bible says that when Abraham separated himself from Lot, then the Lord comes to Abraham and he says to Abraham, he said, now look out from where you are. He says, as far as you can see into the north, the south, the east, and the west, that have I given unto you. But God could not show Abraham the level of blessing that he had for him until there was a separation between he and Lot. Y'all still don't hear me. There was a separation between he and Lot. Lot represents hindrances. Lot represents the things in your life that the enemy sends to block you from the blessing that God really has for you. And what God told me to tell you tonight is that when that hindrance breaks, God's going to release the thing that you've never seen. But you have to separate yourself from Lot. Tell your neighbor you've got to get rid of Lot. Yeah, you've got to get rid of Lot. It didn't say that while Lot was with Abraham that God showed him the blessing. It was after there was a separation that God speaks to Abraham and says, now I'm going to send the promise. Now I'm going to send the overflow. Now I'm going to send the increase. It could be your Lot that is killing the promise in your life and that's why God is saying in this new season, you've got to let Lot go. You've got to cut away lot you've got to get that thing out of your life you can't tolerate it any longer you've got to kick it out the door you've got to turn to the exit sign and say lot there's the door and walk into the blessing that God has for you but you've got to get rid of lot and lot is not just a person it could be anything in your life and God is saying get rid of it get rid of the lot the thing that held you captive in 2019, your lot, that hindrance, that thing that keeps setting you back. He says, let it go. He says, let it go because when you separate yourself from that thing, because it's really not your friend, it's really not helping you, it's really not benefiting you at all, it is sent to deceive you, it is sent to sabotage the blessing that God has for your life and the moment you depart from it, God's gonna open up your spirit and open up your mind and open up your life to something that you've never known but you've got to kick that spirit out of your life the thing that's influencing you negatively and cut it off and then you'll be able to look to the north, the south, the east and the west and God said Abraham as far as you can see I'll give it to you 
as far as you can see I'll give it to you. I've got to tell you this tonight before I close this message. 2020, 2020, God said, I'm also gonna give you a clear vision. I'm gonna give you a clear vision. Abraham, I'm gonna let you see it now. I'm gonna let you see into the spirit what I have for your life. 2020, you're gonna be able to see things you've never seen. You're gonna be able to look into the realm of the spirit and see the blessing that God has for your life because if you can't, can't see it you can't possess it but if you can see it then God will give it to you hallelujah is there anybody in here tonight that the Lord is opening your eyes to some things that you've never seen before and you are determined to grab it you are determined to possess it you are determined to walk in it you are determined to receive it in your life because now your eyes are coming open Somebody throw up your hands right now and say, Lord, open my eyes open my eyes open my eyes and let me see open my eyes and let me see how great I am open my eyes and let me see the woman I really am open my eyes and let me see the man you call me to be not the man I think I am the man you say I am open my eyes and let me see what I can do and what I can have and what I can possess and what I can overcome help me see the victory help me see the blessing help me see what you're trying to do open my eyes because God said if you can see it you can have it if you see it you can do it if you can see the invisible you can do the impossible somebody better hear me in here give God a praise for your eyes coming open oh can you see it Oh, somebody's eyes just came open. Somebody's child is coming home. Somebody's situation is being turned around for the glory of God because now your eyes are coming open to the blessing. Abraham couldn't see until Lot left. And after Lot left, God started talking to him about the vision. He cleared up his sight. See, the Bible says where there is no vision, the people perish. The enemy will work overtime to blind you and to cause you to not see what God really has for you. And sometimes God has to remove out of all the clutter all the things that are trying to block your view from seeing in your life what's next. I'm telling you, 2020, he's going to clear your eyes up. He, you, you're not going to settle for less any longer. He's going to open up your understanding and he's going to cause you to see things that you've never seen before. You could have been around your blessing all this time, but you couldn't see it. But in this season, your, your vision is going to go to another level. You're getting ready to have 2020 vision. You're getting ready to have 2020 vision. Things that you couldn't see, you're going to be able to see them now. When I was a little bit younger, I had really bad eyesight. It was so bad that I had to wear glasses. Not just that I had to have glasses, I had to wear them thick glasses. Because my vision was bad. I mean, as a young man, my vision was bad. And then I got sick of the glasses and then I started wearing contacts. And I, I enjoyed the contacts for a while because I didn't have to deal with the glasses. And then trying to play sports, you know, you're out there trying to play sports and you're pulling, pushing up your glasses because of the sweat. So when I started wearing the contacts, that helped for a while. But then at times it started feeling like I had rocks in my eyes. Because if any grit got into the contacts, it would affect your eyes and make you feel like rocks were in your eye, literally. It was only until somebody came to me and said, Pastor, why don't you think about having eye corrective surgery? And at first I thought it was a crazy idea, but then I did some research and thought about it a little bit and I decided to have corrective eye surgery done some years ago and I remember the surgery only took about 20 minutes. 
and they told me it would take a few days and my vision would clear up. And I remember that next day after the surgery, everything was still a little blurry. And, and it wasn't quite what I thought it was going to be. But I went to sleep that night, got up the next day, and I could see a little bit better than what I could before. And then the next day, it just continued to clear up. And then all of a sudden, around the third or the fourth day, I could see things I had never seen before. I could see the I could see trees like I had never seen them before. I could see the green like I I mean colors were vibrant. I, I, I love walking outside and looking around because I could see what I didn't see before. I could see the orange and the yellow and the red. I could see the butterflies. I could see further than what I could ever see before. I could stand back here and read the sign 20 feet away now, it felt like, because my eyes had come open. I'm telling you this is what the Holy Ghost is about to do in your life. You've been having glasses on it. You've had contacts on for a while and God is performing surgery on you right now and you're getting ready to have 20-20 vision and now everything is about to go to another dimension and you're about to see things in a more vibrant way because God is doing a new thing in your life. Am I talking to anybody in here tonight? Somebody give God a praise for your vision that's coming back. Will you stand up on your feet? Hallelujah. Tell your neighbor God's getting ready to give me 2020 vision. God's going to give you 2020 vision. You're going to see into the future. You're going to see the colors. You're going to see details. You're going to see all the things that you've missed all of these years. And God is going to redeem the time. He's going to restore the years that the canker worm and the palmer worm and the locust and the caterpillar has eaten. God's about to make up the difference. God's about to take all that time you lost and he's going to force it all into this year 2020 and you're you're going to get it all back and your eyes are going to open and you're going to see things that you've never seen before. And now that the clock has struck 12, I want you right now at the count of three to give God the biggest praise you got because he's given you a new thing in this new season and you're getting 2020 vision. One, two, three, give him the biggest praise you got. Come on, worship God. Hallelujah. Ladies and gentlemen, you just entered into 2020. You just entered into a new decade. You just entered into a blessed place. You just entered into a fresh anointing. Somebody give him the glory. Somebody give him the praise in this house. Something is shifting. 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 It'll never be the same. It will 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 never be the same. That's all y'all got for a New Year's Eve celebration? It will never be the same. It will never be the same again. Your life will never be the same. You are in 2020. You are in 2020. Take your mind out of 2019 and put it in 2020 right now. Now give him a praise. Hallelujah. 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 Tell your neighbor I'm getting ready to get it back. Hallelujah. I'm getting it back. I'm getting my joy back. 
I'm getting my peace back. I'm getting my praise back. I'm getting my prayer life back. I'm getting the anointing back. I'm getting my family back. I'm getting my power back. I'm getting the joy back. I'm taking my happiness. I'm taking the power. I'm taking the blessing. I'm taking the increase. I'm taking it back tonight in the name of Jesus. Somebody shout. Somebody dance. Somebody lift them up in this place. It is your 2020. God is turning it around. God is... Uh, Hallelujah. 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 Tell everybody in your house, this is a blessed house. Tell your husband, tell your wife, tell the children, this house is blessed. Hallelujah. If you're all by yourself, then give him praise by yourself. You're just a blessed person. You're just a blessed man. You're just a blessed woman. God is sending the blessing. 2020. 2020. 2020. It'll never be the same. I want everybody in here, if you would. I want you to make your way to this altar. Just everybody in here, if you would. Just make your way to the altar. Hallelujah. With hands lifted. Hallelujah. There's a glory in here. There's a glory in here. If you just make your way to the altar. It's a sign that you're stepping into it. It's a sign that you're moving into it. That you're releasing your mind from what happened from what was in the past and from how they treated you and for what they said and you're stepping into a fresh season a new season everybody if you could make your way to this altar there's a glory there's an anointing I'm telling you the enemy meant it for evil but God is making it good your 2020 will look nothing like your 2019. The devil, I'm telling you, I'm not just saying this. For some of you, the devil tried to kill you physically. Tried to kill you. By the grace of God, you made it out of that situation. Some of you, he tried to drive you out of your mind tried to send problem after problem to you till you just didn't know what to do but you made it you made it you made it you made it by the time you tried to figure out the financial situation a sickness broke out by the time you tried to deal with the sickness a other situation broke out in your house by the time you started dealing with the situation in your house, something happened on your job. And the enemy sent a stoning. One thing after another. Tried to kill your joy. Tried to kill your destiny. Your confidence. But that devil is in trouble. This is your year. This is your year. When you let go of Lot, everything's going to change. Everything's going to shift. Don't you take Lot, Abraham. It's a new season. It's a new season. It's a new day. You, you can't live off of that old anointing. God is sending fresh anointing. God is sending a fresh word. Fresh revelation. Blessings you've never seen. Blessings you've never heard of. I'm telling you under this anointing. 
prepare yourselves prepare yourselves prepare yourself in the name of Jesus in the name of Jesus in the name of Jesus